सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओं पूर्णमद पूर्णमीद पूर्णा पूर्णमुद्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 ओं सहना सहनौन सह वीरवाहे अध्यास भाष्य ब्रह्मसूत्र ब्रह्मसूत्र इट से वन आफ दि इंपार्टेंट टेक्स which we study as a student of vedanta the sutra literature itself is very unique to our tradition that because i think ours is an oral tradition and it is easy to memorize the sutras because sutra by definition should be alpaksharam that means it has minimum number of syllables so the sutra itself is characterized uh, characterized as alpaksharam asandigdham saravat vishvato mukham like that so the sutra should have minimum syllables but it should still be covering the subject matter completely without any doubts it should cover the subject matter with certain clarity with minimum number of syllables so that kind of a literature we not only have for vedanta the vedanta sutras or brahma sutra is only one of the sutra literature we also have vaisheshika sutra nyaya sutra yoga sutra most popular paniniya sutra for vyakarana also the vyakarana sutra is special because it uses a meta language to describe the natural language the other sutras are generally using the language as it is like brahma sutra is using sanskritam but still everything in that will not be a proper sentence and all that because in sutra literature we normally don't repeat a word once it is used for example brahma sutra has four adhyayas each adhyaya has four padas or four quarters and then overall 555 sutras are there but although it is called brahma sutra the word brahman comes only once in the first sutra which is athato brahma jignasa afterwards we don't see the word brahman at all but wherever required we have to separate it. that is called anuvritti so in any sutra literature each and every sutra we have to understand based on the anuvritti but the anuvritti itself is not written anywhere so that is only known if you come through a certain guru shishya parampara so that is why the commentary becomes very important without shankara's commentary we won't know how to interpret the sutras and how to give meaning for them and brahma sutra itself is an analytical text it is part of the nyaya prasthana we say the shruti prasthana is upanishad which is the source book you can say then bhagavad gita is the smriti prasthana amongst the smritis are the remembered or authored texts bhagavad gita is taken now what bhagavad gita and all the upanishads are trying to reveal what is the tatparya of the shastra that has to be established because upanishads also have lot of topics upanishads talk about creation upasanas are talked about but what is the main topic or the main subject matter which the upanishads are trying to reveal similarly bhagavad gita also is talking about many things including dhyanam 
and karma yoga like that different subject matter are dealt with even in bhagavad gita in fact everybody is writing a book on bhagavad gita correct bhagavad gita for managers or bhagavad gita for this bhagavad gita for that because you can basically read anything you want to read depending on your interest i think but really what bhagavad gita itself what it wants to teach how do we know that for that only this analysis is required the analysis is called mimamsa in fact mimamsa itself is a very interesting word it comes from the dhatu man which actually is in the meaning of worshiping with the san pratyaya which means desire so mimamsa means it is a desire to do analysis but in a very respectful and worshipful manner we are doing the analysis because to find the truth basically what is the tatparya of the shastra here this mimamsa is also called as uttara mimamsa that is because we are doing analysis of the vedanta we are not analyzing the karma khanda or the purva bhaga of the veda that analysis has already been been done by jaimini jaimini is believed to be the shishya of vyasa only vyasa has done the brahma sutra jaimini his shishya has done the purva mimamsa sutra and that purva mimamsa sutra starts as athato dharma jignasa so how to gain dharma or what is dharma how do you know how to gain this? because dharma also is a purushartha correct you want to achieve dharma means how to go about doing all the karma with reference to dharma everything is analyzed in the purva mimamsa shastra so then one one important point is why are we even doing this uttara mimamsa because purva mimamsa is already analyzing the veda what is the necessity to start uttara mimamsa there can be a question correct unless uttara mimamsa has a different subject matter different uh, adhikari who is qualified to study it and different prayojan different result there is no point in starting a separate uttara mimamsa so this also has to be established then that uttara mimamsa as a grantha as a shastra has relevance it has its own adhikaris and it has its own purpose and subject matter which is different from the purva mimamsa because purva mimamsa is dealing with karma and karma means veda is revealing sadhana sadhya there what is the sadhya again can be known sadhya like putra or unknown sadhya like swarga correct the ends can be known or unknown similarly means are also unknown means veda only is telling you that swarga kamaha jyotishto mene yajata or putra kamaha putra kame uh, there is a putra kameshti is that using putra kameshti you gain there again putra may be a known end but the ishti itself how to do that yajna and all only veda is saying so sadhana sadhya rupena only veda is a pramana in the form of giving you different means and ends veda becomes a pramana in the purva bhaga now how is it different in the uttara bhaga i think the difference is here the vastu is siddha vastu means already it is a fact what you are already in fact mukta you are already brahman that is what is supposed to be revealed and revealing a factual knowledge for that veda itself is not required some people argue like that so veda cannot be a pramana with reference with reference to something which is factual or a siddha vastu which is already established which is already there so shankaracharya has to also show that veda pramanyam is there even for siddha vastu 
because the puru vimamsaka say that veda is only a pramana with reference to karma and it can only reveal sadhana and sadhya or means and ends here how can you say there is even for a siddha vastu what is to be achieved correct if it is already there you are already a mukta you are already the limitless consciousness what is there to be achieved then and what is the use of this shastra that is why shankara brilliantly starts by making a case for this that even for a siddha vastu it can become a sadhya vastu how can that which is already there which is already established as a fact can become something which you want to achieve how can it be like that if you ask the simplest example is what i can have my specs like this correct and then i forget i am already with the specs it is a siddha vastu but due to ignorance what happens i think that i am now without the specs in fact i am not able to even see properly and i am searching all over the place but i am already the one with the specs but i do not know that and since the seeker and sought are the same it becomes even more difficult because normally the seeker is seeking somewhere else and the seeker being the sought is a greatest secret or okay. hiding place correct so that's why the shastra has to come and reveal because here we say with reference to the siddha vastu also why do we say vedanta is with reference to siddha vastu because we say it is revealing to you your own atma correct the swarupa of your own atma or yourself now if i ask you are you there all of you will say i am there <laughs> i am so there is no doubt in that answer i am is known to everybody then the other question is why should then anybody even talk about this atma then why do you require a shastra to come and talk to you about this atma because i am is known to everybody shastra need not reveal the self in that way if you see the existence of the self is already established in fact self itself is self revealing and self existent we say because this i am to say that you don't have to use any means of knowledge you don't have to use any pratyaksha or anumana or anything to say that i am there correct so i am is a siddha vastu no doubt but still this i am is not known in the way it should be known correct that is where all the problems start even though i am is a siddha vastu but the nature of this i am as the infinite consciousness is not known and that is where the problem is now that is what shankara also starts if you see the adhyasa bhasha i don't want to go into the sanskrit and all that but let me tell you how it starts the first two words at least we should know he starts like yushma dasmat pratyaya gochara yogo when these two are enough what he how he is starting the adhyasa bhasha is he is saying yushmat pratyaya yushmat is actually the pratipadika it's not even a noun he says yushmat means that which denotes it is the noun stem for denoting this a or you in fact really it is you yushmat means it is you or this and asmat means it is the pratipadika and from there you can derive different types of nouns correct which which is referencing oneself so you are this i or self these two are there he says because we all understand you and this i and oneself these two pratyayas are these two meanings meanings of these two words are clear to us and they are what vishaya vishayi noho he says one is the vishaya because you are this is always an object of knowledge and i or the self is the subject so one is the object of knowledge another is the subject or the knower so one is vishaya one is vishayi fine now what is the problem in this 
so he further says they are also tamah prakashavat viruddha swabhavayo they are opposed to each other in what way they are opposed to each other because whatever you know as this is jada it is inert always even some other person's body also is counted as inert understand that because we never objectify one more consciousness don't think that what if i see another person who is also a sentient being you can ask but that sentiency is also a manifestation of consciousness in one's own sukshma sharira but the sukshma sharira stula sharira everything is taken as only jada in the vision of the shastra so whatever you see as this you are only seeing a body of a person and if that person dies then that body is still inert only right? we all know that body by itself doesn't have the nature of sentiency or consciousness so whatever you see as this or even you it is all jada and i the self is always conscious therefore these two are totally different from each other they are tamah prakashavat viruddha swabhava is that like even light and darkness one is inert it is like dark and the conscious being i the subject is like light we both are totally different to each other okay even this is fine and because of this he says itara itara bhava anupapattaya okay they cannot uh, one cannot be uh the other okay one cannot become the other is it clear so they cannot uh, you cannot say the subject is object or object is the subject is that clear the subject can never become the object object can never become the subject because they are opposed to each other like light and darkness this is siddhaya means this is established knowledge this everybody knows there is nobody can even dispute this correct it is it is obvious okay then still what happens okay before still what happens he also says tat dharma naam api okay that means the qualities of the objects and the qualities of the subjects is also not the same they are also totally different and you cannot take one as the other this is not at all possible he says because the same reason he is giving this asmat is chidatmaka means it is consciousness and yushmat is sal inert correct it is jada that vishaya is jada therefore the vishaya and vishayi can never be confused logically speaking it is not even possible that you can say that one can be taken as the other or one's qualities can be taken as being in another correct either the the subject's qualities can never be in the object object's qualities can never be in the subject and also the subject cannot be taken as the object or object cannot be taken as the subject is it clear this is this is how he starts shankara starts the adhyata bhasha by by pointing out how illogical or how impossible it is to take one as the other but immediately what he says is even though it is like this tatapi like that he starts the next sentence the second sentence in his introduction still there is anyonyas min anyonya atmakatam like that he says and anyonya dharmanscha adhyasya itara itara avivekena like that he goes on that means even though logically speaking this is not possible but this is happening how can you say this is happening how can you say that somebody is taking the subject as the object and subjects dharma as objects dharma that very much it is happening correct that is the problem of every human being because vedanta in its essence is very 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 simple in fact only one thing you should know in your vedanta sadhana also you don't have to do many things only one thing you do every day or all the time what is that one thing whatever i see is not i correct that's all is vedanta whatever i see whatever is an object of my cognition can never be i correct this all of you can accept it's very clear 
nothing great and also with reference to objects like this you nobody will say this mouse is i you we are all very clear fine even this cloth also there is no confusion cloth is an object of my cognition nobody says i am cloth or i am white because this cloth is white there is no confusion like this but as soon as it comes to the body what happens <laughs> body also is an object of your cognition you know your body but then you take the body as i correct is it happening or not it happens very much you say i am fat i am overweight i am dark or i am fair this i we are placing on the body but logically speaking it is impossible that's how shankara starts now you understand how beautifully he is starting this that means he has already shown to you that there is a confusion with reference to the nature of oneself even though atma is siddha vastu but this siddha vastu atma in reality which is which is like ananta right which is nothing but satyam jnanam anantam brahma in the vision of shastra atma is satyam jnanam anantam brahma that is the vision of shastra but what is the vision of a person an individual jiva that i am confined to this body i am a limited i am alpajnaha alpashakti man all this correct i am limited in my in my power in my knowledge in fact in any which way i look at myself i am limited and now you want to become something that is what is samsara samsara is a life of becoming so that means even though atma in the in the drishti of shastra is already free from all limitations you are still seeking freedom from limitation correct that is your fundamental problem the fundamental problem of every human being is that in your own vision in your own judgment you are taking yourself as a limited wanting being you are lacking something always in your own vision and now you want to get rid of this want and what do you think the solution for that is by doing something by accomplishing something by getting something by gaining something you think that this limited being will somehow become freed from that limitation but that's never going to happen because whatever you accumulate how much ever you accumulate finite things it can never become infinite correct it's a simple thing so you are never going to become free from your limitations that way so even logically if you think if your problem is one of limitation and the solution you seek is freedom from all limitations this can never be achieved in time or by as a result of any karma because all karma phala is limited and anything which starts in time is going to end that also cannot last so if you really want freedom from all limitation the only possibility is that you have to already be limitless because limitless means it has to be limitless limitless with reference to space time and with reference to every object that means it should already be there here and now correct right? you cannot gain moksha by going somewhere you cannot you cannot gain moksha by getting something in time or becoming something in time so this limitless is siddha in this way also even purely from a, what is possible if you think either you are limited is your very nature that is the reality means you cannot do anything about it but if it is your very nature you should be able to accept it correct and be happy with that but that is also not possible because instinctively everybody is trying to become something to get rid of one's own limitation and all that so that is itself pointing out something but the only other option is then i should already be limitless if i am already the limitless the seeker and sought are one correct whatever you are seeking is already established fact but then why am i still seeking that that's why we have to bring the adhyasa here you understand without adhyasa the siddha vastu cannot become sadhya 
only because the subject which is limitless by mistake is taking the object as oneself and all the limitations of the object become your limitation now correct as soon as you identify with the body or your mind or your senses or your prana whatever it is correct because you say i am i am this based on the body you are saying i am tall fat short whatever based on prana you are saying i am hungry i am thirsty and all that that's all only physiological activity correct based on your indriyas you are saying i am i am deaf i am blind or whatever there are so many things based on the indriya and based on mind also you are saying i am knowledgeable i am stupid whatever i am emotional i am angry i am this i am that everything is based on mind now all these properties of jada vastu which is like tamah prakash with viruddha also like shankara said but still you are taking one as the other this is what is adhyasya he says you are superimposing the dharma of the objects on the dharmi or the vishayi okay the vishayas dharma is put on the vishayi and vishayi itself is taken as the vishaya because there is a wrong identification of i on the body and then because of all this mixing up the samsara has started already right and when did it start <laughs> when did all this start means he says naisargikoyam loka vyavaharah okay naisargika means what it was never created or it, it is always like this it's beginningless because ignorance is something it can have, it cannot have any beginning correct right? suppose i ask you do you know chinese what do you say i don't know correct right? but then if i ask when did this chinese ignorance start means <laughs> it it never started correct right? always it is there with you so ignorance doesn't have any beginning it's very easy to understand any ignorance you take does not have any beginning it is naisargika only it is beginningless self ignorance also is the same you have taken yourself as something or you are, you take yourself for granted or you are, you are taking the identity which the society has imposed on you your parents have given you certain identity the society is giving something all that child may not have a big ego correct to start with but once you grow you have picked up certain identity certain personality everything and that you take for granted and then you are going through your life which is samsara really so here this wrong identity has now made the siddha vastu into a sadhya vastu therefore brahma sutra is relevant correct the uttara mimamsa is relevant and shastra also pointing out your reality that actually you are this satyam jnanam anantam brahma makes sense and that itself becomes a purushartha also because that is what really everybody is seeking this freedom from limitations and therefore brahma sutra as a subject matter or as a text should start therefore this analysis should start that is why he is starting with this adhyasa bhasha you understand why should he even start the introduction pointing at adhyasa that is because only when you understand that my problem is this very adhyasa but in reality actually i am already free whatever i am seeking i am already that but because i do not know that and i am doing this wrong identification of myself my identity itself is wrong therefore that siddha vishaya has now become a sadhya you have to now know because you are now asking how can i ever be this ananta or limitless and all that i don't feel like that means then we have to teach you. the whole shastra now becomes relevant so shastra comes and reveals this identity between brahman and jiva correct the brahman as jagat karanam and the jiva have a certain identity and that identity the revelation of this identity alone is the tatparya of all the vedanta correct that is the one subject matter anything else the upanishad is talking about is also 
only trying to give you this knowledge whether it is talking about creation let us say why should the upanishad talk about creation because creation also is a way of teaching you this oneness because creation is only telling you that brahman is the karanam everything else is karya and then what happens karya is nitya it has to show you that basically the srishti prakriya is only to show that brahman is karana jagat is karya and karya is nitya means the karanatvam of brahman also becomes nitya so everything is negated finally when everything is negated the negator swarupa alone is there correct who is negating <laughs> that person swarupa alone remains always as the invariable consciousness and that is you in fact and that is limitless because that is not really limited by any anything all the limitations are born because of because of only adhyasa is it clear so he that is the first two sentences only he has established beautifully that he says satyanrute mithuni kritya aham idam mama idam iti naisargiko yam loka vyavahara ha so the loka vyavahara which we have whatever the whatever our life we have in this transactional world is what this is me this is mine correct aham idam mama idam but this is me itself is such a illogical statement correct because this can never be i understand that <laughs> even saying something is mine also doesn't mean any doesn't make any sense these are all because satyanrute mithuni kritya he says because whatever is satya vastu which is atma which is chaitanyam and the anrutha is all the jagat all the jada vastu they are all anrutha or mithya they are not even of the same order of reality but mithuni kritya means you are mixing up all these things are mixed up and therefore all the problem has started and that's how people are living their life so this first is yes, in the first two, uh, two sentences shankara has given you set the stage for why brahma sutra is relevant and why uttara mimamsa has to take place but still people come and ask okay you say people have done the superimposition adhyasya and all that correct then one guy comes and ask koyam adhyasa what is this adhyasa you are talking about then there are different theories of adhyasa also okay because most puro pakshis don't even want to accept that there is adhyasa because they are afraid that if we accept adhyasa this advaitin will come and then <laughs> then show that only advaita is satyam other than advaita everybody is a dvaiti understand that <laughs> they may claim they are vishishta advaiti and all that it make more, no sense correct as soon as you say vishishta there is a visheshya and vishesha and vishishta means what two things are there where is any advaita there there is no advaita or anything there is advaitin everybody else is really a dvaitin and dvaitin does not want to give even an inch he, think, he thinks that if I, if you give an inch this advaitin will take entire brahman then okay the, the, the limitless he will take it so they all have their own theory so i don't want to go into each and every theory and all that i can do that but within this one hour and all that it may not be possible but generally that is called khyati vada okay the theory of error and each darshana has its own theory of erroneous cognition is it clear how does erroneous cognition take place and some of them in fact are very very weird and extreme for example i think pure this vishishta advaitin say yathartham sarvam jnanam that means what all cognitions or knowledge are yathartha means what they are all real only they say everything is real how means they say even if you see silver on shell okay they say that since panchikarnam and all has happened i think that this is what their argument is i think but i may be wrong but their argument is everything is there in everything else also in some proportion you understand <laughs> therefore even if you have a wrong cognition you are actually seeing the right right thing only because some proportion of silver is there in shell also that is the kind of argument and all they are giving which is very ridiculous really speaking so that is one extreme then others say that no no actually 
the silver is there only in the jewelry shop shell is there only in the beads but because your memory you have seen silver there that shop silver only you are actually seeing here okay so there is something called anyatha kyati akyati like the different types of kyati vada are there buddhists have their own something nayayikas have their their own theory and all that but bhashyakara presents all that okay next because they ask what is this adhyasa the puru pakshi comes and asks you are saying adhyasya they are super impose what do you mean by this because why they they are now saying no no we have a different theory whatever you are saying as adhyasa is not it is not like that for that purpose this question is asked then finally bhashyakara here says that atasmin tad buddhi whatever explanations you guys may give okay what is the thing <laughs> on something which is not you are seeing that correct rope is not snake atasmin means what not that rope is not snake but in in not that you are seeing that correct you are seeing snake rope is not snake but you are seeing snake on that that means everybody has to accept the perception of uh, that on not that correct atasmin tad buddhi is common nobody can deny that that is the experience and that way he simply says that adhyasa means seeing something which is not there is adhyasa and that happens only due to ignorance correct because if you know rope as rope you cannot see any, any snake there so that's why this self ignorance due to ignorance alone the siddha can become sadhya otherwise if you already know the established fact very clearly there is nothing to seek or anything but even though the established fact is that you are already satyam jnana anandam brahma but due to ignorance this is covered so ignorance has an avarana shakti ignorance has a vikshepa shakti also so that vikshepa is what we are seeing as the appearance of snake or adhyasa now in purely subjective superimposition like seeing snake on rope the advaitins we also say that the ignorance itself is the upadana karanam for that that means the very snake you are seeing is itself is a modification of your your ignorance of rope only why we are saying that is on knowing the rope the snake vanishes correct but when you know the rope what happens is the rope ignorance is destroyed but if along with the rope ignorance destruction the snake appearance also is destroying means it is like you have you have a shape made up of ice let us say correct you have a cup made up of ice now ice itself is gone you heat it up along with that cup also is gone correct if the upadana itself is gone the effect which is born out of that upadana karana also will be gone like that here the ignorance itself is taken as upadana karanam for the appearance of snake and once the ignorance is gone snake also is gone only you see whatever is rope which is there this is one kind of scenario but in some other scenarios only the knowledge is gained but the appearance is because of some other upadhi means the appearance can still continue this also one has to understand when we talk about adhyasa we say there is something called artha adhyasa and jnana adhyasa okay artha adhyasa means what one appearing on another correct super imposing one thing on another jnana adhyasa means knowing one thing as another so there is a difference between seeing one thing on another and knowing that this is this why do i say this for example sunrise is there correct now sunrise sunset and all is only a illusion of the language 
sun never rises only earth is rotating so if you know this also sun rays is still continuing you can still enjoy the sun rays that is because sun rays is not only purely due to your ignorance sun rays is because the srishti itself is ishwara upadhi something is happening in the srishti but there the jnana adhyasa is gone when you know that only earth is rotating sun never really rises the wrong imputation that sun is rising that knowledge is gone but that does not prevent the sun from rising or setting or anything correct right? that appearance is still there so this also one should understand when we talk about adhyasa in some cases with knowledge the appearance also goes away in other cases even though knowledge is there appearance can still continue this is possible so anyway the the adhyasa part uh, he discusses very clearly here and then so adhyasa alone is known as avidya also he says so adhyasam pandi uh, tam etam tam etam evam lakshanam adhyasam pandita avidyeti manyante so this adhyasa is also called avidya that is because as i told you adhyasa is nothing but the vikshepa shakti of avidya avidya also has avarana shakti and vikshepa so adhyasa can also be called as avidya some people actually take this particular statement and create lot of their own some uh, pratyaya they have created a sampradaya but i don't want to go into that so but that is more confusing only i think than clarifying anything so the vidya itself is what then knowledge is what bhashyakara says tad vivekena cha vastu swarupa avadharanam vidya mahu so he said adhyasa is avidya then what is vidya also he has, he has to say correct he says you do you discriminate between what is vastu what is not vastu and then you know the reality of the vastu the swarupa of the vastu now you know properly that is known as vidya so this vidya alone is the tatparya of the entire shastra that's what bhashyakara wants to point out here so the pramana vyavahara because studying the shastra is what it is nothing but a pramana vyavahara and this pramana vyavahara what is it trying to teach you it is trying to teach you the swarupa of yourself and make you understand that it is a mistake which you are committing whenever you take the dharma of your body mind sense complex as your dharma or whenever you place the i on this that's why we have this pancha kosha and all that can be call all these things as kosha koshavat achadaniya we say that means it is like a sheet which is covering because it is a locus of error you are placing the i on all these things on the pranamaya or annamaya or manomaya vijnanamaya anandamaya like that in all these places i is placed wrongly by placing the i there basically it is like covering your true nature it is like a sheet which covers the sword that's why these koshas again it's all only pointing out to the adhyasa and so the simple sadhana or the simplest teaching of vedanta is whatever i see is not i this you keep you keep analyzing this particular vakya correct and you see that and if you can unentangle you are wrong identities with reference to your body mind sense complex and understand yourself as the limitless conscious being that is what the shastra is trying to really teach you okay so uh this is what i think i have given you some kind of a uh, introduction to adhyasa bhasha i didn't go through the entire thing but 
basically why shankara is starting with adhyasa is the most important point we have to understand here and that is to show that even a siddha vastu becomes sadhya because of adhyasa and avidya and basically the shastra pramana vyavahara itself or the analysis itself is only to make this vidya happen and again for you to own up to this siddha vishaya which is already there okay so maybe if any questions or anything is there we, i can answer the without adhyasa there is no brahman and without adhyasa there is no atman no 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 shuddha shuddha so adhyasa was brahman adhyasa was there always with, without adhyasa what we can say is without adhyasa there is no bandha or moksha that is correct you cannot say there is no brahman or atma brahman or atma is always there it is the only independent independently existing reality okay so it is self revealing self existent and all we say swata siddha swayam bhu etc brahman and atma are there they are not dependent on adhyasa or anything but what we can say is without adhyasa there is no moksha or there is no bandha unless there is no bandha there is no moksha as a purushartha and there is no teaching also yes. guru shishya vyavahara also is within adhyasa only everything is within adhyasa in fact that is said very clearly in mandikya also gauda padacharya says it in so many words the, the, the other question is that what we see is vyavaharik or mithya so mm. I, i see this it is mithya and what i don't see exists so that is a basis and that requires justification i think see the important thing to understand is why this atma gnanam is subtle or why it is difficult is because all the knowledge which we have gained in our life we have always gained it as an object of our mind correct all the knowledge which we are gaining how how that knowledge takes place the traditional understanding is your mind takes the form of that object and when the mind takes the form of that object consciousness is manifest there and then it lights it up then that object becomes evident to you It means that ignorance is destroyed by the mind taking the form of that object and that's how the object becomes evident to you now in the case of sense perception we even say that mind goes through the senses and takes the form of that object in the case of inference and all that whatever the prior knowledge you have about the uh, invariable concomitance is already there with you correct but still you see something else but in the mind a certain vritti is there correct the mind takes the form of an object of the inferred object also purely in your mind and that again becomes evident to you but in all cases even black hole for example is purely inferred correct because you cannot even get light from there light also is captured by the black hole but still all these things you conceptualize and know that as an object of your mind very good but now atma gnanam the problem is atma cannot be objectified correct so this knowledge is very different from every other knowledge to which you are used to so then how do i know the subject means the mistake most people make is they try to know the subject also in some somehow as an object <laughs> you cannot do that and you need not do that that is the most important thing to understand you need not objectify yourself to know yourself because you don't have to use any pramana to know that i am there i am is a given everybody knows i am i am i am i am this puranam is all all always there with everybody so you don't have to objectify yourself then why do we even go through all this shastra vyavahara only to remove all your wrong notions there are wrong notions already that is the adhyasa which shankara just now talked about correct you are taking yourself as the body mind sense complex that is the adhyasa so the shastra vyavahara the shastra and the guru all of them all all of them are only teaching you 
to get away from all this erroneous cognition give up all this wrong understanding and then atma need not be revealed or anything it is always as it is atma is always shining it is swatasiddha swaprakasha you don't have to objectify it or anything so you cannot say uh, we are trying to reveal something unknown in fact we are trying to reveal to you the most intimately known thing which need not even be objectified correct you are always shining as the atma all we are doing is just removing all the wrong notions about yourself that is the shastra vyavahara but it is somewhat in fact if you understand this it is the simplest thing to know in fact atma alone can be known completely understand this see every other object even though you say you know it if i ask two more questions you cannot answer correct correct anything we have only some level of knowledge i ask why 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 again after two three why you will not be able to answer because this mithya jagat it's not you cannot go beyond that but atma is the only thing you can completely know because it is partless whole understand that the eye sense never has any parts this is our own anubhava you can easily understand this i am always i am always felt as only a complete being correct even though my i may lose a leg i, I do not become three fourth me or anything i am always i which is a partless whole and this i knowing oneself as a conscious being is the easiest thing i know myself completely then because i don't have any parts also i don't have to know each and every detail and all that so this is the only knowledge which can be taught and which can be known completely all other objective knowledge is all incomplete and it is all only confusion really okay you are on mute i think shrini so it's one continuous uh, therapy of deconditioning decondi- correct it's deconditioning is always this whatever i see is not i this you continue at some point in time it will it is going to become to you very clearly like we say correct ullangai nellikan pole means asthamala kavathu there is no doubt you cannot but see it in the end the shastra is very clear the guru the teaching of our gurus are very clear it's actually very simple that's why even they say that ramana used to sing that ayye ati sulabham atma vidyai ayye ati sulabham like that so the atma vidya is really ati sulabha it is very very easy because it is based on a very simple thing but still it is very difficult because the conditioning prior conditioning is so much to overcome that requires effort there is no doubt about that even though you have certain clarity about what the shastra is showing you to be shastra is a mirror which is showing your reality but you want to see that reality and assimilate it requires a constant effort till the time it becomes natural to you because the prior conditioning is so much it is very powerful also shankara himself accept that if you take the biradharmika bhashya 147 he says that it is bal- balavat and all that the the prarabdha karma is balavat he says rahar the karma has started this body and along with that the identification also is there and to break that identification and truly appreciate yourself for what you are does take effort there is no doubt about that but then what other worthwhile cause is there for you to put effort other than this because if you don't put the effort for this the loss is limitless correct the upanishad itself says that ihe ched avedit atha satyam asti nachet iha vedin mahati vinashti like that so if you don't know this here then the loss is limitless loss if you know this then it is satyam means what then you know the truth the reality or the limitless but otherwise your loss is limitless therefore put better you put effort on in this there is no other worthwhile pursuit other than this for you to put effort there is a jagdish and jyoti you have any questions 
No questions. I, I think, correct me if my statement is wrong. <clears throat> the concept of adhyasa, I think, is an absolute must to explain the Jagat on the basis of Advaita. Yeah, yeah that is correct. Absolutely necessary. If you say Advaita, everything is... Yeah, if you say Advaita, everything is one, then you have to explain why the word, word appears. Yes. So the concept of Adhyasa is a must. Yes, yes. Uh, that is also the reason why Shankara starts, you can say. But since the Shastra is about Atma Vidya, it is not Jagat Vidya, correct? Yes. So that's why we have to say, we have to look at it from Atma only. And Shankara also is looking at it like that because he is presenting the Adhyasa as taking the Yushmat and Ashmat and mixing it up and superimposing, correct? Yeah. So he is presenting it from the standpoint of oneself only, more than from the standpoint of the world. But what you say is correct. To explain away the world, we have to say that it is Adhyasa. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so, I done my part, Premji. Now ask Jyoti. <laughs> and then the other concept is, um, which will take another lecture probably, is the concept of Maya. Mm. That's difficult to understand. We can have a class some other time, yeah, whenever you want. I'm here even next week and all that, but may most next week I may be in California, but I can. Uh, just Maya, we can take up either from Bhagavad Gita or even Upanishad references are there. Like statements like Indro, Maya, Tihi, Kururu, Paha, Iyate, or Shweta Shatra Upanishad also has the Maya to Prakritin Vidya, Mayanam to Maheshwaram and all that. We can take it up, definitely. If you want, we can have a one hour uh, discussion on Maya. And then you connect it to Brahman plus Maya, no. Ishwara, and then creation. <laughs> oh, all that. This plus thing is a problem. I don't really. Brahman, Brahman including Maya. The, so better to say that looking at it from the standpoint of Maya or something like that. Because there is no plus. Plus creates a certain confusion, I think, in mind. So no, I don't use Brahman plus Maya is Ishwara kind of an equation. Yes. It is better to say that. Even, even mathematically, you can't add unlike things. From correct. two different realities. So you are two different add. realities, correct? So there is no... This plus word, I think, is a yes. somewhat of a confusion. Even Pooji Samji never says like that. So I think we should, uh, uh, some of these things can be very subtle. Subtly, it can create some confusion also in you. So better to be alert in the way we think. Because I always say one thing, uh, is that I, I had a certain discipline that even in my thinking, I did not want to use any words which Swamiji did not use. Because I think by bringing in unnecessary words, you are going to confuse yourself. And I tell to my students also the same thing. Do not use any word which I am not using. Even when they ask some question, correct? many times the problem is because they are using their own words <laughs> to understand something and it comes in the question also. Then I say that I never use this word. Why are you even asking me this? Because that is very important. I think you have to be alert because words are the pramana here and always even in your own thinking also don't use words which are not used by the Shastra or the Guru. Of course, I can say this to all of you because I think you are all Pujya Swamiji students. <laughs> Otherwise, we cannot even say this, I think. So then we can have next time Maya and creation. Yeah, yeah we can have. We'll have next Sunday we can have. I am available here. I'm available till July 22nd in US. So this time is okay. Otherwise, if I'm in India, this will be like midnight for me. So. Time will be different. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, this uh, coming back to this deconditioning. Mm. Um, so if if one were to, I'm, I'm thinking a little bit in a idealistic state. If a child were to be introduced in a so proper with, yeah, from the beginning, how will it be? Correct? Yeah. In fact, there is even a Puranic story about this. I think Madalasar, you go and read that. Yeah, 
so we do have stories like vamadeva became a jnani in the womb itself correct all these things are there so he said that i am manu i am aditya and all that so it is there but even then we have to say that for the child to understand that some purva janma sukrita has to be there otherwise like i said the conditioning is there it is naturally there correct certain identity we are foisting <laughs> and then everybody takes that for granted there is no analysis of that yeah so there's some prarabdha there yeah yeah definitely without prarabdha we wouldn't have met swami ji also i think <laughs> and grace <laughs> yes definitely it's all a great grace and uh, yeah no doubt about that okay so we'll finish this year om sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve siramayah sarve putraani pasyantu ma kaschid dukha bhag bhavet asato ma satgamaya tamato ma jyotirgamaya मृत्योर्मा अमृतंगमय ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमीद पूर्णा पूर्ण मुदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं थैंक यू जयशंकर थैंक यू सो मच so okay. we are uh, we having uh, next week the same um... same time we can have yeah okay good okay. and we'll continue yes yes till he is here <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. okay namaste hari om thank you hari om thank you hari om hari om